Hey everyone, Matthew here from Red Flyer Tech. If you watched my previous setup video, you may have noticed that I have a little bit of a problem. I have a white mouse pad and a white mouse, but I have an all black keyboard and it just doesn't really go. But I like this keyboard. I got a great deal on it. I've had it for under two years and I'm not quite ready to replace it. So today we're going to be doing a $25 upgrade to our keyboard to totally transform the way it looks. We're going to be using the HyperX Pudding Keycaps. Alright, forgive the uh, somewhat odd camera setup here. I turned my desk into a tech review station, but let's open this box up before we actually do anything to the keyboard and see what's in here. The box did get a little bit beat up in transit, but that could have been our package center here. Um, sometimes that happens. I don't really know. I got this from Amazon. I hear the keys inside there, I think. Um, I got it from Amazon for about $25. I've seen it from other retailers for various prices. There we are. There's both of those stickers and that should allow us to open this up right here. I will also mention that this is brand new, if that wasn't implied. I uh, did not buy it used. So here we have this. It does look like it could have been like used, just uh, the way the box was mashed up and looks like our manual got a little destroyed here. And if anyone's curious, I do know that this is a HyperX uh, Keys, a key set or set of keycaps, and I do have a Razer keyboard, um, but we'll talk to that once we uh, once we get it on on the keyboard. I do believe that this set will be compatible for many different keyboards. You can see right here, we have the layout. I guess it's upside down for you. Um, we have the layout of the keyboard. Just in case you're confused, I guess. In case you don't know how the keyboard works, uh, I guess once you take all the keys off, it could be easy to forget where they all go. So I'm gonna make sure I take a picture of my keyboard before I take them off, but it actually looks the same. Here we have all the keys. Um, let's let's open this up. They look super clean. And we do have this, uh, this tool as well, which is gonna be used to take the old keys off. I was hoping we would have one of those because I tried to take them off with pliers once to clean my keyboard. It went very poorly and I just scratched some of the keys and gave up on it. It looks like this is actually vacuum sealed, I think. Um, so I'm gonna need to go grab some scissors. I'll be right back. All right, we're back. We got these big, uh, kitchen kitchen rubber rubberware scissors uh let's open these up oh yeah that was definitely vacuum sealed i can kind of hear the air uh the air release when we opened that on these keys right here let me uh get it to focus oh my that is like really weird okay there we are that looks that looks pretty good uh here's the t key but I don't know if you can notice, it's just a regular white key on the top that's upside down. <laughs> there it is, but it's actually translucent on the side here, and that's where I, why I picked these, because the LEDs are gonna shine through super well right there. Right now, this keyboard, it's kinda hard to see the LEDs sometimes, so it's gonna look really awesome with those translucent bottom halves of the keys. Let's take a look at the bottom of one of the keys too. It actually, I guess there's not much to see down here. I'm not sure if the camera will focus. I'm not, I'm not gonna mess with the focus of the camera. It's just a little plus. But I've never used this tool before, so we're gonna be trying it for the first time here. Uh, I'm gonna try and grab the, let's grab the escape key first. I don't know if it's better to go on the top and bottom or on the side. It, feel, it seems like it fits better on the side. So let's press it in the sides here and then squeeze and pull up. And it did come off. Just like that, uh, you can see that same kind of plus socket down there. And you can see as well, I always forget what kind of switches I have, but I believe I have green switches. That's what it looks like. Uh, again, this is the Razer Black Widow Tournament Edition. Uh, it's the version two Chroma Tournament Edition, 10 keyless. I'm gonna pop on the F1 key here and squeeze. Oh, okay, so you have to put it on the sides, go all the way down until you hear that click, and then squeeze and pull up, you really don't need a lot of force at all. That seems the best way to do it. Taking it off is kind of hard, especially because I don't want to scratch the keys, but what I'm gonna do is grab it like this and then pull out. And that was kind of off camera, but I had it here and then I pulled out like that. Let's do one more, F2. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it on either sides of the key, right here. Gonna press it all the way down. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. And <laughs> now it's stuck down here. Uh, let's get our tool out really quick, okay. 
We're going to go on either sides. We're going to press it down until we hear the click. Now it's on this key. It's locked on there. And then I'm going to squeeze. You can't see what I'm doing here, but I'm just squeezing on both sides. And then I'm pulling up. And it comes off super easily. All right, so we've taken a few more off. Uh, before we do anything else, I actually do want to test and just see if these new keys actually do fit. Let's try the F, um, the F row maybe. Here's the F3 key, so I believe it'll go right here. I think all you do is line it up and pop it right on, I think. I'm not certain, hopefully they fit. You'll line it up right there and press it down. Seems to be pretty good. You can see there's like a little hole on either end here. There's a little holes and then if you look down in the backspace key you can see there's this little bar. I believe that bar was actually supposed to go through these holes so I, I don't think we broke anything but I, I should have been more careful. I'm going to be more careful with the enter key and maybe some of the other keys that might have that as well. So you want to just be careful when you take off some of these larger keys, I guess. I would imagine this would uh, vary keyboard to keyboard. So really, you should probably do a little bit more research <laughs> than I did. So as you can see, I, I don't even want to give you too close of a look here because it, it is kind of gross. Yeah, that's, that's bad enough. Um, there's lots of hair and other stuff in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go take it over the garbage and shake it out. Maybe get some Q-tips as well. Um, I'm not sure if I have any isopropyl alcohol here, but try and go through with that. All right, well, we got the keyboard cleaned up a little bit. Um, my roommate actually pointed out that having an air duster would probably be the ideal way to clean this. Like the little air dusters with the straws on them that direct the air in like a really fine beam. Unfortunately, I don't have one of those with me. So what I did is I shook it out over the garbage can for a while and then I actually went through with Q-tips and uh, just wiped off in between each of the keys. I think I'm actually going to start with the E key right here and I'm going to be looking at our uh, like diagram to make sure we're putting the keys in the right spot. Let's put the E key right here to start off. We're going to start off with some of the keys that we know are going to fit. I'm going to try and line this up as best I can. Looks like it's going to go right about there and apply equal downward pressure. And that seems to have snapped in perfectly. Now I do want to mention as I'm placing more of these down, uh, H is one of the ones that you can actually put down upside down if you wanted to. So be conscious of that. All of the letters are gonna sit on the top, at least with this pack of uh, keycaps and also you do need to give some pretty firm pressure, so don't be afraid to press down too hard. The strategy I'm really going with here is just trying to line it up as best I can, and I'm doing this really gently. Right there, it seems lined up, and now I'm gonna grip it with four fingers, one in each corner, and just give equal pressure pushing down, and you can hear that click. If you look at the bottom of the backspace key here, you can see we have three of these pluses. So clearly this bar design is not going to work because there's nothing for that to clamp onto. So what I'm going to try is see if we can just put it down on the middle one and I'm going to use it for a little bit and see if it works all right. If it does, we'll stick with it. If not, we'll go back to the black one. So it's lined up and it's pressed down. All right, well, I tested it out for a little bit and it seems to be working great. So I'm not gonna worry about it. I think those other keys should work well as well by just pressing them down in the middle. The only one I am a little worried about is the space bar because it's so large, just anchoring it in the middle might have it wobbling a little bit. So there it goes. <laughs> Clearly, this solution is not gonna work. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's like a spring. 
that's that's super annoying and when I press one side down either side goes up so if I rest my both of my thumbs on here and I press down with one thumb it's actually not pressing because this other thumb is blocking it so that is clearly not gonna be a good solution and this could work but then we're gonna have an awkward gap here because our control and alt keys were larger with the original key set so see how large this gap is right here compared to all the other gaps it just ripples from there i think what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull off this entire bottom row replace it with the original keys and it's still gonna look super cool perfect we no longer have a uh, wobbly space bar if we click it snaps right back up um it is kind of a bummer that we're not going to be using this bottom row here but i, I kind of figured that when i bought this set just because i mean we are using a HyperX set on a razor keyboard so the fact that this many keys fit in the first place is pretty impressive um and you can see now it's a perfectly snug fit i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to turn the lights off in here and i'm going to film some b-roll of us plugging the keyboard back in it's about time all right everyone moment of truth we have the keyboard set up here. As you can see, we have the black bottom row, but everything else is white now. With those translucent keys, of course, down here, they're gonna diffuse the light super well. Um, we're gonna plug the keyboard in. Excuse this cord. I'm recording from OBS because it's just easier and I can use my better microphone then. But let me grab this cord right here and we're gonna plug the keyboard in and see what it looks like all lit up. If I can plug it in. There we are. So there it is. I actually said I would turn the lights off, but I have them on right now because I want to show you just how bright this keyboard is, even with the lights on. It's just crazy. It looks so much brighter. It actually looks like the keys themselves are lighting up now instead of just um, the frame underneath the keys. All right, well, the camera's really going to struggle to get this out, um, but we have all the lights off except for like my LED strips and stuff like that. All the main lights are off. Of course the monitors are on too but you can see it's so bright the camera can't even really pick it up here it looks so awesome though i'm really happy with it i don't mind the bottom row not being filled in at all i think it adds a little bit of character to the keyboard i the only thing is the arrow keys i might replace the arrow keys with the black keys just so it looks a little bit more uniform or maybe i'll see if i can put like just the control and maybe the windows key make those white just so it looks uniform because it's a little uneven right now but i love the way it looks it looks super awesome and i'm really happy with it and i'm using my arm because i don't want to set the tripod back up but i hope you did enjoy this video if you did be sure to drop a like down below and comment what you'd want to see in future videos comment your thoughts comment the keyboard you're going to put this on or the keycaps you're going to buy again the link to these ones will be linked in the description down below but there are other options out there I hope you enjoyed, subscribe to see more, and I will see you in the next one.